everyone! I'm Rachel from Preacher's End Farm. I'm making this video for all the farmers out there who need more cold room storage and are on a budget, or maybe you're not necessarily on a budget, you just like the idea of actually being able to pay yourself to farm. Um, this is for you. I'm not a YouTuber, I'm not promoting an online course or anything like that. I just figured out how to do this and I haven't been able to find any other tutorials on YouTube about how to do it and I felt like it's such a money-saving thing that it needed to be out there for other farmers to be able to find. Plus, there are a bunch of curmudgeons out there online that told me it couldn't be done. So here is pouring, running, cold, fresh veggie proof that you can, in fact, set up a cold space with an AC, a window AC unit and bypass having to have a cool bot and do it a lot cheaper and not sink a whole lot of your time into it. One of the nice things about window AC units is if you ever need to service them, you don't have to call out an expert uh, with the price point. You can basically just pull it out and buy a new one and stick it in there. It's like a half hour's worth of work. Uh, you don't have to bring out a technician. It's a lot cheaper. Um, a cool bot costs $350 last time I checked. The thermostat that I'm using costs $100 uh, with wire cutters, a screwdriver, a few wire nuts. The minutes it's going to take you to watch this video, you can save approximately $250. So if your time is worth anything less than $250, this is going to make sense for you to do. This will be a savings. There are lots of DIY projects where it's really easy to spend so much time and so much labor value into the project that it actually would have been the wiser choice to just buy the thing instead of making it, this is not one of those cases. This is a clear cut time saver. So here's how you do it. Uh, you Google capital SF-104 and buy yourself a $100 thermostat. Now there's probably other brands, other models you could buy. You need something similar to this. This is what I have right up there. Um, SF-102 is the one that you would need for a freezer, but that would be a little bit more complicated because freezers need to have a heating coil that they use in their defrost cycle. So that's one more component that you would need to buy and tack on. Um, I haven't done that, so I can't really speak to it. Uh, just throwing that out there. Okay, I you could probably use an even cheaper thermostat like this one that I'm using in my germination chamber, but this one doesn't give me some of the control options that really help me prevent my window AC unit from frosting up. It's not going to allow me to run a defrost cycle. It's not going to allow me to control the range of temperature variation that I allow. Uh, so I think it's worth it to get the SF-104. You're also going to need the window unit. I'm not going to go into a lot on that because other people have covered it in their videos on how to do a cold room build with the window AC. Um, I found one of these Arctic Kings. I have an Arctic King 5000 BTU model. If you're starting from scratch and you just want to get the same exact same one so that all the wiring is exactly the same, that's what you would get. So the CoolBot fans that I have to talk to seem to be under the impression that the only way to turn a window AC unit on and off is to trick the thermostat by heating and cooling its sensor. But the rednecks of the southern states of the US know better, and some of them are on YouTube, and they've got these videos about how you can bypass a thermostat on a window AC that doesn't work anymore and make it to where when you plug the unit in, it just turns on. And since it's so freaking hot down here, that if you're running a window unit in the summer, you pretty much just want it on all the time, full blast anyway. It's keeping a lot of rednecks cool. So uh, you can go check those out or hopefully this will be enough information that you won't have to, but it's totally, totally possible. You can take off the housing with just a screwdriver and a little bit of gentle prying. So that's where you're gonna start and you're gonna expose all the wires inside. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make this video while I was actually installing my unit because it was one of those must-have refrigeration in the next two hours sort of scenarios, and I had too many audiobooks on my phone. So I'm making it now. I have a few still images that I took. Hopefully, I can pop those in here and make it really clear which wire is which and what goes where. So here's how you're going to do it. Power comes into the unit through 
the power cord here. And there'll be three wires. Uh, the, the standard convention, and it's the case with this model, is that the green wire is for ground, the black wire is the hot or positive, and the white wire is the neutral. Um, the black one is the one that you're most concerned about. That's where the power comes from the grid into your unit. So that's the line on which you need to insert. Well, first you remove the old thermostat and then you're going to put your own thermostat in there to just to replace it. So it's just, if you remember anything from like high school physics about a little circuit board and turning on a light bulb, it's just all the same stuff. It's, it's nothing super complicated. What you're going to do is you're going to cut the plug off and you're going to open up, take the housing off of the unit so you can see the wires inside. Okay, so the power is coming in through a black wire. That black wire goes first to the knob for that controls the fan. This one right here. So I've left that knob intact. And then there's a red jumper wire that goes from that knob up to the knob that controls the temperature. That's the one we're going to remove. Move that jumper wire. Then there's a slightly pinkier red wire and these have really easy connectors on them it's super easy to take all this apart that hops from there into the compressor system here you can see the pink wire and a piece of black wire that I used to extend it so it would reach the thermostat the, any wire that you use to extend these wires so they reach wherever you have your thermostat mounted just need to be the same gauge as the wire you're extending or a heavier gauge. So basically there are two things that receive power in the system. There's the compressor system and there's the fan system. The compressor is the big black heavy canister part of the unit. You can see right in there. And it needs a starter to get it started. So the wires actually go to the starter, which I have a picture of. I'll pop that in here. It's about the size of a tomato paste jar and it's got these little connectors on the end. So some of you particularly observant folks may have noticed that the pink wire I've been talking about is going to the compressor and going to the starter disappears into a black sleeve. And then the wires that actually connect to the compressor starter are gray and blue or black and blue um in any case i traced all of that the first time i did this i don't remember honestly at the moment exactly how that works but i do know that it works the pink wire does ultimately connect to the compressor so that's you're gonna take that slightly pinkish color wire if you're using this unit and that's what you're going to hook up to your thermostat where it says or the wiring diagram says to plug in the positive supply for the compressor and that's really about it uh, if you're using a different air conditioner model you might need to trace the positive wire yourself and just figure out where it goes to the fan and where it goes to the compressor if you bought a digital controlled um, unit that might be a little bit more complicated i specifically looked for a unit that had the analog knob controls because i knew that that would be the, uh, the wiring would just be really obvious and very simple to bypass on those um, the rest of the instructions you need should come with the thermostat itself so i'm not going to go into how to wire that up it'll come with a little diagram you just follow instructions um, Another misconception that people have about not using a cool bot is that if they disconnect some wire, or open up the unit, disconnect some wires, they're going to bypass some safety mechanism. Um, the only safety mechanism that you bypass in this case with this model is in the cord. And that's just to shut off the unit if anything happens to the cord and to make sure that the unit is grounded before it allows the unit to run. So, I've done my due diligence and I've made sure that all the ground wires are connected. Remember that's the green one. Um, and that I'm using a three prong plug and that my 
I, I'm actually running this on an extension cord. I used the pr appropriate gauge of extension cord. So I feel really good about the safety of this unit. Uh, it's also just in this inexpensive little outdoor shed that I built to keep the rain off of it. Um, so obviously do whatever you're comfortable with, but I feel like this is meets my personal safety standards. Uh, one of the advantages of this setup over a cool bot is that the SF-104 controls the fan and it controls the, the compressor unit on its own. It doesn't just trick the, the window AC unit into running according to its own protocols or not running. It specifically controls each of those components. So you can set it up where the fan comes on X number of minutes before the compressor comes on and you can set it so that the fan runs continuously even if the compressor is not off, um, even if the compressor is not on, um, which can help you not get mold built up in there. It might also just help with airflow inside of your cold room. Um, so I'll just take a second and here and show you. I don't actually have a room right now. Um, I've, I'll get there someday, but right now some uh, a generous restaurant owner in town had this refrigerator that had quit working so it's basically was just an insulated box to him and not worth very much at that point so he gave it to me and I put the AC unit on there and that cools everything in these four doors here and then I actually use what used to be the freezer as a germination chamber but I could also easily saw some holes in there I could stick some fans in there I could wire those up to the same supply as what's powering the fan in my window AC and I could just circulate the cold air into that part of the unit as well if I wanted to expand it um, the other thing you need to know about the SF 104 specifically is that the set point and, and temperature range don't work the same way that they work on most thermostats. Most thermostats, if you set your desired temperature at 38 degrees Fahrenheit and the acceptable range at 4 degrees Fahrenheit, it will cycle between 40 degrees and then the compressor will kick on and it'll bring it down to 36 degrees and it'll wait for it to heat back up into, uh, to 40 degrees before it'll kick on again. This particular unit takes that whole range and sets it above whatever set point you've selected. So whatever set point you've selected, that's the coldest that your refrigerated room will ever get. So you just want to take that into consideration. If you want your cold room to hang out at about 38 degrees, you'll want to set the set point at 36 degrees and the range at 4 degrees or something like that. If you put this, if you put the range too narrow, especially in a really small space like what I have, um, you can end up with issues with it frosting up. Um, I did that and then I figured out what I'd done wrong. I increased the range. There, there's instructions that come with the thermostat on how to, how to program all of this, but basically you're going to hold down the set button. I have this disassembled right now so I could show you the back of it and then it'll start cycling through um, the options that you can set uh, like the delay for when the fan comes on, how often it runs a defrost cycle, how long it runs the defrost cycle for, things like that. Um, yeah, I'm going to take a picture inside of there so you can see it. I just want to take a moment while I have this image up here to reiterate or point out that there will be four wires total coming from your AC unit into your new thermostat. One will be that pink wire that's going to the compressor. You may need to extend that wire to get to your thermostat. The other three wires are inside of the power cord. You're just reusing that wire basically. The green ground wire, the white neutral that's coming back from both the compressor and the fan and the black positive wire that's running to your fan. All four of those wires coming from the AC unit into your thermostat. Then you'll also have power coming into your thermostat and the uh, temperature probe. So just follow the instructions that come with your thermostat for all of that. 
don't pay any attention to what color the wires in this picture are. I tapped into some existing wiring in the refrigerator. Just follow the diagram that comes with your thermostat so you know where to put each of those wires. You also might notice that I've run the power coming into the thermostat through a switch that's right above the thermostat there. That way I can turn the unit on and off without having to unplug it. Oh yeah, I had trouble with mine icing up. Uh, I actually got water inside the fan housing and that made the fan run slowly and then it just kept icing up and icing up. So that would be something to watch for. The So the unit, prob most of you probably know this, the unit pulls in air here. The cold coils are directly behind the screen and then there's the fan that's pulling air and then pushing it out through here. Um, so this was icing up and I blew a hot hair dryer on it to defrost it. Well, that blew the water into the fan housing, slowed down the fan, made the thing ice up again. So I actually put a little tube through up here and I just siphoned that water out and now it works well. But that fan housing doesn't drain well. So in the random event somebody else runs into exactly the same problem I did, there's the solution. Okay, this is the thermocoupler that came with the, the original fridge. Yours will probably look different if you use the one that comes with the SF-104 thermostat. Uh, I have this just suspended here because that's what I have the wire for. But what would be ideal would be to put it in here as close as you can get because that's where the that's basically the air return. So you want to gauge what temperature you're heating or cooling to based on the air that's going back into the unit, not the air that the fresh cold air that's coming out of the unit. That's, you know, most of you probably figured that out by yourselves. Um, so yeah, I think that covers it all. Thank you for watching. I really hope that this saves you some money. Uh, share and like if this was a benefit to you because I'd really like to help more people save money if I can. All right, thanks everybody and have a great day. Bye.